Alright everyone, the third chapter of the Jojo Lands is here and things got crazy. There's a lot to talk about, starting with the fact that there is a new stand in the series. Currently, we don't know too much about it, but it's looking to be really cool. So far, it looks like the user has to walk around, and then from that, they'll drop some sort of floating string. Then afterwards, the string will wrap around anyone who comes in contact with it, or even anyone who's close to the string. And then, it will start to get tighter and tighter dealing a lot of pain to whatever is affected by this string. This stand definitely seems like something that Jodeo was hinting at during the end of chapter 1. And so who is this person behind this incredibly strong stand? A cat. It's, it's a literal cat. Just a random cat who was in the house. Rohan doesn't even own it. Rohan was just as confused as they were. It's, it's actually crazy that the thing Jodeo was possibly hinting at in the start of the series wasn't Rohan, but a stray cat. Wait a minute. STRAY CAT! Oh, that's a Jojo reference! Okay, but seriously, since the cat uses string, I think it's clear to say that this is alternate universe stone free. This cat is definitely just like Jolene for real for real, and I can't wait to see it be essential to the plot but genuinely i do find this interesting i really want to know if this cat is owned by possibly the main villain of the part or what if this cat is actually just a human who could shapeshift <laughs> jojo has really messed up my raw mind on this type of stuff this is this is just definitely a chapter you can point to and just not know what's going on like this is absurd what are you doing araki well this is how Rocky intended it to be, since it is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, after all. Now, something I just want to talk about for a bit is Paco's different language of words here. Apparently, this is in Portuguese, so maybe this gives us info that, you know, Paco's nationality and, like, where he's from, all that. Now, okay, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to attempt to say that line, but the translation of it seems to be but what is this is squeezing well you know it's not it's not direct because google translate is weird but yeah we we can tell what paco is trying to say here i guess with what the stand seemed to do it makes sense as a reaction it's just you know something interesting to say that, that you know he just turned into a different language when in severe pain it's just interesting to note now, a cool aspect of this chapter was Jodeo being a mega fanboy at the sight of Rohan and all of his stuff. You can definitely tell how excited Jodeo was to be at the house of a famous person who created a series he enjoys. Well, it wasn't really a house, but you know. But despite all of this, Jodeo was still able to keep track of the mission, so we know that he still super serious for the job despite him ogling at Rohan's work which you know it adds to his character that he does put work first over his own desires and speaking of Rohan's work Jodeo did say that Rohan was working on pink dark boy there's even Jodeo seeing Rohan's dog back in and mentioning his editor now these are all aspects of part 4 Rohan, or well, specifically, thus spoke Kishibe Rohan's version of Rohan. We haven't seen too much from Rohan in this chapter, so it's still hard to say whether this is a brand new character, or literally just Rohan from part 4. But with this new information, it's looking to be part 4 Rohan. Or maybe TSKR Rohan has become his own Rohan? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very weird situation, but man, Haraki, why'd you do this? But the Bakken appearance was fire, though. Is That's definitely the best dog not named Iwasuke in the series, so we love to see that. It's a very, very cute. But something cool to see was this funny moment at the start of the chapter. So, Dragona told Paco and Usagi to not steal anything else and that they were just here for the diamond. And literally the very next 
panel shows Paco and Usagi stealing a bunch of stuff. Usagi mainly steals liquor, while Paco is out here stealing the whole house pretty much. This panel is also pretty good at showing what Paco's abilities are truly capable of, since he's holding... I don't even know how much stuff he's holding, but it is a lot. This gag is really funny to see, especially with the items that Paco is carrying. Now, Paco, I, I know it might be tempting, but I think a plunger is not a necessary item to take from an insanely rich mangaka. Just, just a thought. But yeah, this was a really funny scene. I guess you could say I really liked it, just like how you should all like the video. <laughs> but, but really, it's definitely a very funny panel that is also really informative. So, there is this really cool scene from when Dragona, Paco, and Usagi found a room that had a bunch of lava rocks in it. And this was another hilarious scene, mainly because of the way Usagi reacted. So, Paco called something a beaker, but Usagi corrected him saying it was a flask. And then went on this tangent talking about the difference between a beaker and a flask. And then he also mentioned the type of lava rocks that Dragona talked about beforehand as well. <laughs> it's quite literally just a nerd emoji moment coming from the panel right here. He he really hit us with the erm. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it was just like... <laughs> Apparently Usagi just knows some random facts, something I bet the 12.6% of my audience would enjoy, as he's quite the goofball. And honestly, speaking of which, it was also mentioned that Rohan went to volcanoes and stuff, and got his own lava rocks as we saw from the room. So there was a lot of volcano and lava motifs in this chapter, with the first chapter of Jojo Lands also having a whole section that was just around a volcano, and with the entire part of the Jojo Lands being in Hawaii, volcanoes might be a really important element in this part that not a lot of people have really discussed that much. Maybe maybe that specific volcano could be a devil's palm, but, but who knows. Also, this last panel of the chapter just hits different. Rohan started to explain some things about Jodeo's stand, November Rain, like the rain droplets and in certain areas. I guess this means that for November Rain, people actually can't see the rain as well. They just see nothing at all. all. All that happens is that they get hurt and they run away. But with Rohan noticing the rain, Jodeo realizes that Rohan could have a stand. Or as Jodeo puts it, he's someone who can see. <laughs> It's just such a good line. That's just like, wow, what a way to end the chapter. It was amazing. As well as the chapter in general. Like, I can't wait for next month. Like, like seriously, I can't. I'm craving more content. Just like how I crave for these 50 characters to all be in All-Star Battle R.